Um, but now to, to, to welcome you to uh, this talk about the history and politics of the Americas BA degree. My name is Nick Witham, and I'm lecturer in United States history here at UCL, specifically in the Institute of the Americas, which is the department that hosts this brand new BA degree program. And I'm joined in my presentation today by Professor Jonathan Bell, the head of department at the Institute of the Americas and professor in United States history, and also Dr. Kate Saunders Hastings, who is lecturer in Latin American studies and an anthropologist, and also uh, at the back of the room, Ruth Harper, uh, who is the department's administrative manager. Uh, and so I'm going to be giving the talk now, but um, Kate and John and Ruth will be uh, able to answer your questions as well as me at the end. So really what I'm going to do in the next 20 minutes or so is talk to you about what the history and politics of the America's undergraduate degree is, talk to you briefly about the admissions process and what we look for in an ideal candidate for this degree. Uh, I'll then talk to you in a bit more detail about the teaching and the assessment that we uh, undertake as part of the degree before talking about the year abroad as an option, um, and then finishing by talking about the skills that we think that this degree embeds in students, and finally thinking about the careers that this type of degree in history and politics of the Americas leads to. So first of all, um, I just want to talk briefly about what history and politics of the Americas is. This degree, I think, does two really important things. The first is that it provides you with a very solid disciplinary grounding in the disciplines of history and politics. Uh, there are various modules throughout the degree program that allow you to develop this disciplinary uh, expertise. In doing this, we also offer a wide range of study across the region of the Americas. Uh, gestured towards by this, uh, this map from 1776, from uh, Canada and the United States, down through the Caribbean, to the countries of Latin America. Now, this geographic range uh, across three different regions of the world allows you to put this disciplinary speci specialism in history and politics into connection with this exciting and dynamic and, and globally important uh, region. So the degree is very broad. It offers you the opportunity to study the histories, um, the political development of the societies and the cultures of these various societies uh, in the Americas. But it also op offers opportunities for specialization. Um, some of you will be thinking about this degree um, with a particular interest in the United States or a particular interest in history or a particular interest in politics or a particular interest in, in Latin America. And whilst there are broad overarching degrees that, uh, sorry, broad overarching modules that allow you to compare these various regions, there are also plenty of opportunities for both disciplinary specialization and regional specialization. So that's the degree in and of itself. Um, I thought it was also worth us thinking a little bit about why you might want to take this degree here at UCL. Now, on one level, this is, we think, a relatively unique degree program to, to the extent that there aren't really any other degrees in the UK called History and Politics of the Americas. But there are also, I think, a range of other reasons why you might want to take this degree at UCL. I think the first of these is that the Institute of the Americas, the department in which we are all housed, and the department which houses um, 15 uh, academic specialists in uh, the study of the Americas from the perspectives of history, politics, international relations, sociology, and anthropology. It's the largest unit for the multidisciplinary study of the Americas in the UK. Uh, and what this means is that those academics who you will encounter on a day-by-day -day and week-by-week -week basis in the classroom are leaders in the field that they work in. We are all publishing journal articles and books in the fields in which we work. Those publications and that research expertise informs the teaching that we do from year one all the way through to year three. Uh, and that level of expertise, I think, is really, really important um, for us to take on board. Another really important factor is that the intimacy offered by the Institute of the Americas. Um, as my colleague Kate said, said earlier today, London is an enormous city. UCL is an enormous institution. Um, but the Institute of the Americas within this large city and this large institution is a very small and intimate space. As I've already said, there are 15 members of academic staff. There are four members of administrative staff. During the course of a three-year degree, I'm sure that you'll get to know all of those people on a on a first-name basis, and they will get to know your name over the period of that time. 
But also, we are anticipating um, that in our first recruitment for start in September 2018, there will be between 20 and 30 students on this degree program. So it's intimate in that sense as well. I think it's realistic to say that you'll get to know the names of all of the other students taking the degree program, and I'm sure that you'd be able to make some very valuable friendships and connections in that way. So intimacy and size, I think, is important. And finally, I think London's incredible location as a research city. There are lots of amazing things about London as a location, but we are here at UCL in the heart of an amazing research culture. We're surrounded by world-class research libraries. The British Library, most famously, at St Pancras, but also the Senate House Library that serves the University of London, the Institute for Historical Research, more specific to history. The UCL Library in itself is world-leading as well. So I think it's fair to say that we can make a pretty bold claim for the fact that uh, outside of the Americas as a region, London is probably the best place to be studying this topic in terms of access to research materials um, and, and, and disciplinary expertise. So I think there are a range of reasons for thinking about why, we should, why you should study history and politics of the Americas here at, at UCL and at the Institute of the Americas. So I just want to talk briefly now about admissions. Um, our entry requirements, as it states there, are three A's at A level, 38 points at the International Baccalaureate, if any of you are taking that. We have no specific subjects that we ask for at A level. We want to welcome students in from a variety of different specialisations at school and at A-level. There, there is obviously going to be um, a route in for lots of you who've, who've done history A-levels or politics A-levels or maybe even history and politics A-levels. But the important thing to bear in mind is that these are not requirements. Um, they will not put you at the front. They will not necessarily put you at the front of the admissions queue, i.e. those who haven't taken those A-levels will not be disadvantaged. Um, this is, this is a degree that will teach you history and politics from the ground up without you necessarily having to st have studied those subjects. It's also worth talking briefly about the personal statement and what we're looking for in an applicant. I think it's really important for me to, to say right from the outset that those of you who are applying for this degree will more than likely be applying for a range of other subjects as well. Right? You won't all be applying for six or seven history and politics of the Americas degrees simply because there aren't that many to apply for. Um, so we are not expecting your personal statement to be tailored in great detail towards UCL or towards the Institute of the Americas. It simply wouldn't be fair for us to expect that of you. So a, a relatively generic personal statement that is pitched at a range of different subjects is absolutely fine by us. One of the tips that we would give you, though, in terms of adding some value to that personal statement is to try and think about what it is that means that you're particularly drawn to the study of the Americas. Um, have you taken some, some modules at school that relate to the history, of the United, history or politics of the United States or Latin America? Uh, have you done some kind of work experience that means you're particularly interested in this region of the world? Have you simply just been on holiday somewhere in the Americas that makes you particularly interested in this region? These are the types of things that just in a sentence or two, it would be really, really useful for us to see in your personal statement to demonstrate that not only are you thinking about history and politics and perhaps other subjects, but that you're also particularly interested in the Americas. But as I say, it's vital for you to know that we don't require this to be tailor-made for us because that wouldn't be realistic to expect. But that's our, that's our admissions information. It's now worth just me talking you through um, the degree in a little bit more detail and the type of teaching that we do and the type of modules that we offer. Students will take between four and six modules each academic year, um, and they will cover history and politics in, in, in disciplinary terms. There is, as I said, the opportunity, in particular in year two and year three, for specialisation, um, but you will always take some modules that cover both disciplines, and I'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a second. Um, you'll have approximately eight hours of contact time in the classroom each week, um, but there will be other opportunities for one-on-one um, -on -one engagement with your tutors uh, in tutorials beyond that. There are the opportunities for language study in every single year of the degree course. And for those of you who are thinking about studying abroad, and in particular studying abroad in Latin America or the Caribbean, uh, these language modules will be compulsory um, if you're going to study at a university where you'll be instructed in a foreign language to make sure that your language competence is up to scratch by the time you go, you go abroad. And in terms of the way that we deliver our teaching, we try and make this as dynamic and as exciting as possible. We rely on the traditional lecture seminar setup 
to, um, to, a, to a significant extent. Lectures to larger groups of, of people of this size, perhaps, perhaps quite significantly bigger, but then always connected to those lectures, smaller seminars of between 10 or 15 students where you will be interacting one-on-one -on -one with a tutor, with the students that you're in that class with, discussing reading, discussing arguments, um, and really getting to grips with things. And so there's a mixture of learning there, but we're also um, interested in pursuing a variety of different um, teaching methods through workshops. These could take place at UCL. They could take place where it's relevant at various research libraries or cultural institutions around London where there is relevance at galleries or museums or at the British Library uh, for you to go there for specific weeks of your modules to, to find out about the resources that those places hold. And as I've also said, one-on-one -on -one tutorials. Each student will have a personal tutor throughout the course of their degree program. Uh, they'll see those, uh, those personal tutors on a regular basis, but you'll also have plenty of access to one-on-one -on -one discussions with your module tutors to give feedback on essays, to give pointers about how to improve, tips about exam revision, various other bits of advice and support are given in one-on-one -on -one tutorials like that. And it's probably worth me just saying something about assessment as well. Uh, the degree is assessed by a range of methods. We have traditional exams. We have uh, traditional essay submissions. But we also assess you via presentations, both as individuals and in groups, and through various other forms of slightly less traditional um, assessment that allow you um, to develop your skills and develop your experience in a range of different ways. And I'll come on to that a little later when I talk about the skills you develop in the degree. So just thinking um, about the type of uh, modules that you'll be taking during the course of, of, the, um, of the degree, all of you should have a, have a small flyer in front of you which gives full details of all the modules that we have as part of our program diet. There's no need to look at it in, in great detail now. I just wanted to gesture towards that because what I'm showing you on the PowerPoint is often a kind of summary and an indicative list and the most detail is, is, in that, is in that flyer. In the first year, you'll take two compulsory modules, one entitled Encountering the Americas, which is a broad introduction to the long history of the entire region, going back to European contact with um, indigenous uh, societies in the 15th century, coming all the way through to the present, so covering a massive swathe of history, um, but also introducing you to key uh, theoretical um, and conceptual issues, things like race, class, gender, slavery, imperialism, independence, globalization, key ideas that are going to be really, really important to you as you go through the degree program. You'll also take the module Introduction to Politics, which is a very solid introduction to the discipline of politics, um, comparative politics and international relations. Then you'll take two optional modules in the first year. If you want to study abroad in Latin America or the Caribbean, it will be compulsory for you to take a language module in, in Spanish, Portuguese, or French, whichever is most relevant to the, the part of the world that you want to, part of the Americas you want to study in. Um, and then you would have one other option if you were doing the, if you were doing the language, uh, a module on the 20th century history of the United States, a module on the 20th century history of Latin America. If you chose not to take a language module, you would take both of those. So that's the first year. Then in the second and third years, we begin to see more and more choice for you as a student. As I said earlier, more and more choice for you to, to think about how you're going to specialize. Uh, in, the sec in the second year, you'll take two compulsory modules, Research Methods for International Studies, which is beginning to um, build, the, build the, um, the foundations for your dissertation research, which is an independent project that you'll pursue in your final year. Um, but also a module, Politics and Society in the, in the Americas, thinking about contemporary issues relating to the political um, development of the Americas in, in comparative perspective. So thinking about the comparison, say, between the development of political parties in North America and Latin America or the outcomes of elections in North America and Latin America. These types of issues will be the focus of that module. Then you'll have a range of options, and this is where, um, after this talk, going away and looking at the brochure that we've, we've, we've given you, we'll, we'll see a full range of these options Lots of modules covering the history and politics of the Americas from, from different regions and from different um, disciplinary perspectives. Module on London and the United States. Module on the history and politics of popular culture. Democratization in Latin America. Topics in the anthropology of Latin America. And then a, a language option as well. So there's, there's, there's quite a bit to choose from in the second year. And then in the third year, the choice is, is, is amped up again. We have students do one compulsory module, Contemporary Issues and Texts in the Americas, which focuses on really, really contemporary issues. What has developed 
in the history and politics of the Americas in the last two or three years as you've been studying this degree program. It might, for example, be that a particularly significant election has taken place during the course of your degree program that is worth talking about in broad perspective. This will be the type of, the type of thing that we'll do in this module. And one of the interesting and innovative things about this module is the fact that at the end of it, not only will you be assessed in the traditional way by, um, by exam and, and by essay, but you will also um, be asked to do a public-facing form of assessment, which will mean producing a blog or a video or a website or a, um, uh, a display for a, for a museum or a gallery that reflects in some specific way on what you've learned as part of the degree, but looks to communicate that with an audience outside of the university rather than inside of it. I think this is important to uh, your employability skills and thinking about the, uh, the use to which you can put your degree. After that, you will also do a dissertation a 10,000-word independent research project, which will be attached to a module that we call a special subject. Um, so you'll do um, a year-long module in that topic, and you will also write a dissertation on a particular aspect of that that, that interests you. Uh, and again, we have a range of these. There are four on the PowerPoint there, but there will be, there will be more to choose from um, during the course of the degree. One on Che Guevara, one on the history of sexuality in the United States, on crime, violence, and control in the Americas. Um, Money and Politics in the Americas. My special subject is on the history of radicalism in the United States during the Cold War. Um, another module on the history of the civil rights movement in the United States. There are a range, of, a range of different options there. And then beyond that, you also have further options to take and, again, the opportunity to take a language if you so wish. So that's the final um, year of, of teaching. I now just want to talk to you briefly about the, the opportunities provided by A Year Abroad which is something that we would encourage everyone who's, who's interested in this to, th this to think about. This degree program is, is available in two variants, a three-year version where you spend all three of those years at UCL and a four-year version where you spend the third year of the degree at a university in the Americas, at one of UCL's partners in Canada, the United States, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Brazil, Chile, or Argentina. If you were to pursue that year abroad, you would then return to UCL to complete your fourth and final year of study. This year abroad, and this is a UCL-wide policy, is not credit-bearing to the extent that it does not contribute to your overall degree classification. So it's an opportunity to go abroad and experiment with the modules that you want to take, broaden your horizons beyond what you've been able to study in history and politics of the Americas at UCL. But if you pass that year, you pass with with year abroad on your transcript, which is an important thing, I think, when we're thinking about communicating to employers the fact that you've been able to go abroad and succeed in a different culture, a different country, perhaps with a different language as well. So there are lots of intellectual um, bits of value to a year abroad, but I think it's also just worth thinking about the way that the tuition fees work and thinking about the financial value of this. If you're a UK or an EU student, you will only pay 15% of your fees to UCL and no fees to the host institution in the Americas. Uh, if you're an overseas student, you pay slightly more. You pay 50% of your fees to UCL, but again, no fees to the host institution. Now, of course, you have to cover your accommodation and your food and transport and all that type of thing when you're abroad. But in terms of tuition fees, this works out, I think, as very good value, especially if you end up at a, uni a US institution where the tuition fees are sky high compared to our, our British tuition fees. So that's the year abroad, and again, something that people may have some questions about at the end. Just finally, to, to, to wrap up, I just want to talk about the skills that these, this degree embeds and the careers that it, it leads into. I think there are three important ways of defining the skills that a degree such as History and Politics of the Americas uh, embeds in the student who, students who take it. The first is that there's really serious intellectual scope here, and I hope you've got a sense of that from me talking about the range of different modules and topics that you can study as part of the degree program. You're ranging across disciplines, you're ranging across geographic areas, and I think this speaks to the desire amongst employers in the modern world for, for students who, who can speak across borders, whether they're geographic borders or disciplinary borders, can speak to different people uh, at different times and communicate effectively in a whole range of ways. So that intellectual scope is incredibly important. But there are also really core and valuable transferable skills that a degree like this embeds in you as a student. You'll come out of a degree like this as a terrific researcher, someone who's very confident going away on their own, showing initiative, researching a particular topic, um, and then being able to communicate the results of your research. Your skills of analysis and criticism are what you're working on on a week-by-week -week basis. 
uh, engaging with other people's arguments, criticizing them, understanding how they've been constructed, and then constructing your own arguments and developing your skills of argumentation. You'll also spend a lot of time working on your formal writing skills. And, you know, even students who are very good writers at the end of A-level, their, their ability to write well expands dramatically over the course of a degree program like this. So formal writing is very important. And then finally, I mentioned briefly that we, we assess by some presentations and things like that. Working as an individual to present to an audience, working as part of a team to present a particular project to an audience. Again, these are really important skills when it comes to the, 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 the world of employment. So they're, they're valuable to, to be embedding in our degree program. And I think finally, this point about direct experience of, of foreign cultures and societies is the third thing I'd really want to draw your attention to. Um, this is very much the case for those of you who decide to go and study abroad. As I mentioned already, you'll transplant yourself out of your, the, the culture and the society that you're comfortable in and go and thrive in a new and potentially challenging one. That's a terrific thing to be able to say that you've done. But even those students who don't go abroad will be interacting on a week-by-week -week basis with students from abroad who are studying at, the, at UCL, whether they're from the Americas or from elsewhere in the world. Uh, and that's a fantastic experience. But also, you are studying foreign cultures inherently in a degree uh, like the Americas. They may be cultures that you think are relatively familiar, like lo those of the United States versus those in the Caribbean or Latin America that you may think are more unfamiliar. But actually, this direct experience of foreign cultures and societies is something that's embedded in, a, in, a, in this degree, even if you're not studying abroad. So finally then, just to think about careers that this type of degree leads to, um, the typical humanities and social sciences career pathways are various. And I think that's what's, again, so exciting about a degree like this. You may be sitting here with a relatively firm idea of what you'd like to go and do after university, um, and this will play into that. You may have no idea at all, and I remember sitting in, in a, a lecture theatre like this many years ago thinking, ah, I don't know what I want to do, but realising that the skills that, are, that a degree like this embeds are, are, are really important. So they will lead into the professional graduate recruitment schemes in law, in accountancy, in banking, and these recruitment schemes are ever-present on the UCL campus, giving students the opportunities to network, to find out about opportunities to how to, how to get these highly sought-after jobs after studying at UCL. But also the, the range and scope of this degree, I think, um, orients students perfectly for careers in the civil service and in the diplomatic service, in non-governmental organisations and in charities, both in the UK and abroad. Um, in the cultural sector, we have students um, who've graduated from our MA and MSc programmes who've gone off and worked in journalism, in other forms of the media, in museums and galleries, other parts of the cultural sector. Of course, this type of degree also leads very effectively into teaching and education as well. Students with humanities and social sciences degrees will often go and get PGCEs, become primary teachers, secondary teachers. Uh, there are various routes into that. And then finally, something that's becoming increasingly relevant to, to students uh, around the country, further study. You may choose at the end of this degree to specialise in a master's, um, in something related to history and politics of the Americas, but also something completely unrelated. You might decide to go off and do a, a master's in something business-orientated or something education-oriented, charity, development-oriented. This degree program will provide you with the foundation to go and do that further study if you'd like to as well. So I think there are a range of different career paths that this leads you to, and I hope that gives you a sense of the, of the degree program that we're offering um, here at UCL in the Institute of the Americas, in the History and Politics of the Americas. So I'll stop there and bring my colleagues to the front, um, and we can...